educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the July 8th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. The easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During the next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-664. If you can't dial them, we've got you covered there, too. Let those fingers do the walking. That go, it means go ahead and send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tigers Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we got all the U.S. indices that we track trading the downside. A little bit of a sea of red out here, but we're going to go figure out what, in fact, that means. You got the Dow down 81 points, quarter of a percent. S&P four tenths or 16 points to the downside. Nasdaq five tenths or 66 points. Russell seven tenths, 13 points. Eight tenths for the semis. That's 21. Eight tenths for the trannies. Now that's 110 to the downside. Gold's up 90 cents. Silver's up uh, or off, uh, basically flat. Lights recruit up a buck 72. Natural gas is off 21 pennies. 30-year Treasury is off 1 point and 16, 30 seconds. She's printing out at 136.29. Leading the charge right now. Dollar-wise, the upside, iRhythm Technologies. It's got a good rhythm going. It's up 25 bucks or 22%. Tesla, 13 bucks. The upside, nearly 2%. Kura Sushi. Well, I didn't know we had a uh, publicly traded sushi company out there. Now, there is a, if you're, if you're in New York City, um, there is a, a great uh, sushi bar. It's called Kura. I, I'm positive it's not the uh, same company out there. It's kind of a little local place. In fact, there's no sign outside, just a little typical curtain that you'd have out there. But if you're in the New York area, I absolutely recommend going to that one. It's a That's a great sushi bar. But anyways, uh, Kura Sushi's up 13 bucks or 25%. Steve likes to see that. Tesla's up 13 bucks. Uh, McKesson Corp is up 11. Humana is up 10. To the downside, it's booking holdings off 27 bucks. WD-40 is the next one. That's $26. Actually, that should be up uh, uh, the number one. That's down about 26 bucks or 13%. Uh, Mercado Libre off 19, Pool Corporation down 12, Estee Lauder down uh, 10. So we've got some instruments to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. But let's begin by trying to answer the question, hey, Steve-O, what are the markets doing? Excellent question out there. So let's go take a look at the time frame chart that I think is the most important one to be monitoring. It's going to be today, Monday, Tuesday, and so forth. I don't know if we'll go to Tuesday, but it's really the five-hour time frame charts, otherwise known as the 300-minute charts. And we've got the equity future contracts up on our screen right here. Now, why is this important? Well, first, if we take a look at the ES Mini most recently, we'll get my cursor out here, you can see there was a TD9 count top. This formed earlier this morning. I take that back. That was late last night. That was at 5 p.m. And all that's led to is really sideways movement or really a test of that green oscillator and change line. And as long as price remains above that level, that level, by the way, right now is 38.77, uh, this time frame will remain neutral. Not bullish, not bearish, neutral. Why? You got a valid TD, you got a top out here, but you've got support that's holding, and pr price is actually above the top of its profile as well. Now, if price is able to close above that high, and I'm not talking necessarily today, 
That high, by the way, is 39.14. That'll negate that pattern and suggest we had higher. Well, you've got a TD9 count breakdown level 39.50. So the real level that price has to get through on a five-hour time frame is 39.50. Now, what happens if price closed below the oscillator and change line? Then you're looking at 38.52 as a possible support level, 38.21, and then finally be 38.08.75. Shift over to the NQ. The NQ did not form a TD9 count top yesterday like the ES Mini did. However, we can revert back to the GD9 count top that is still in effect out here, and that's the one that formed at about 9 o'clock in the morning on June the 27th. And that says that it's that high that needs to be taken out in order for the NQ to get back to its bullish ways. That high is 12,262, so you certainly want to watch that, uh, perhaps watch that Sunday night, uh, early Monday morning out there. So at present, what do we have inside the NQ on the five-hour time frame? Not much. What we really have here is price testing, that green oscillator and change line. It's kept its momentum to the upside out there. It's nothing on a five-hour basis that is bearish, really, about the NQ. If we take a look at the Dow, the Dow at 2 p.m. will complete a TD9 count top. And so what we can see here, bar number nine completed at 9 a.m. 2 p.m. is going to be the uh, bar following bar number nine that completes the pattern. Price is above its green oscillator and change line, which is 31, 213. As long as that condition remains, then conditions will become neutral. And the Russell 2000, Russell 2000 has no topping pattern in place other than taking us all the way back to June the 28th out there. Was it 28th? Uh, let me make sure. It is June the 28th. Yes, it was. When it formed a Rosemontum indicator top. What that did was that took price back to its breakout level. That's at 1678.20. Again, nobody with inside the TFNN family would have chosen 1678.20 as the breakout level out there. So you want to understand your TD9s. Just sign up for Mastering Probability. You know, you can do it for more than a month if you'd like. But if you do it for less than a month, it doesn't cost you anything. And you're going to pick up a tremendous amount of uh, education. And the workshop will probably answer questions that you might have while I'm even speaking about this pattern out there. Kill resistance level inside the Russell 2000 that it needs to clear in order to say it's on its merry way to the upside is 1795.10. Now, of course, you might be saying, hey, Steve-O, you're talking about all this merry way to the upside. I have a bearish outlook. And why don't you? Well, that's a great question out there. And the reason that I don't is because the charts don't. What do you mean the charts don't? Well, let's go back to the black background charts out here. And here's what I'm going to share with you. And that's the following. One, here are the daily time frame charts for the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ 100, the Russell 2000, the semiconductor, and then you've got the New York Stock Exchange. You'll see the larger A to B equals CD patterns out there. Each of them have completed. And what Stevie means by completed is they've formed the bullish reversal candles at the completion of that A to B equals CD pattern. So that's number one. Now, you know, just because we have that on a daily basis, does that mean that we've got some type of bottom out here? The answer to that is no. So what do we do? Well, we go take a look at what's going on on the weekly time frame out here. So now we're going to go ahead and shift back to the other charts or the white background charts because here I can show you the roads momentum indicator bottoms. And what you'll see are the top four or the indices that you and I can trade, the Dow, the upper left, the S&P, next to it, the NASDAQ 100, and the Russell 2000. Each of them have roads momentum indicator bottoms. Now I take that back. The Russell does not. That has not given us the bullish reversal candle. But the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ have. Now, the key level, in order for a rally to sustain itself and continue to move forward, is going to be those weekly oscillator and change lines, which this week so far, the NASDAQ 100 has hit it and it has rejected it. Does that mean we're going to head lower? No, it doesn't. Look at the NASDAQ composite. It's sitting on it right now. If it closes above that this week, that says we move higher. And we move higher for two to three weeks. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in the Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. 
This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, diverse partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Well, I had to check out during the break Kura Sushi uh, just to see what it was. It's a conveyor belt sushi uh, restaurant out there. And actually, there is one down in the uh, Miami area. Not that I'll be checking that out. So that's kind of – they, they advertise it as uh, nothing but uh, great ingredients out there. But uh, And it's interesting. In, in, in Japan, now this goes back about 20, 25 years ago. Um, I, I did visit a couple of those conveyor belt uh, sushi restaurants there. And even in Japan, it was kind of suspect out there. But uh, that's what Kura Sushi is all about. But that's different than the Kura that I'm referring to down in uh, New York. Of course, I haven't been there uh, since COVID. I hope they're still open. I haven't. I didn't go check that out. But uh, if you are in that area, check them out. That is a, uh, that is a great uh, sushi bar for sure. So I mentioned as we were coming to the break that uh, – um, that uh, we should expect or anticipate a, a rally for the next two to three weeks out there. And I'm sure somebody was like, now, wait a minute here, Stevie. First of all, I wasn't even buying into the mere fact that you think that the markets are going to rally because I'm bearish out there. But now that I listened or I took a look at the charts out there with you, I get the point. I get what it is that you're saying. Now, how in the heck, Sam heck that is, did you come up with a two-week rally out there or two to three-week rally? Now, those of you that listen to the show, you already know the answer to that question out here. But maybe you're, maybe you weren't listening when I was uh, speaking. Maybe you're just new to the show out here. And the way that we come up with that is just simply by looking at chart patterns. That's really what I do. I am a pattern recognition individual out there. Um, and as we take a look at now, this is the S&P 500 where we're currently at. And we can see from the top that formed out here, this is the top back in the end of the year. Um, we can see that we've had two. Now, this is looking at a weekly chart, by the way. This is for the S&P 500. You can see that we've had two counter trend moves. One lasted two weeks. That's one that ran into February 4th. And the second one was a three-week rally. That's the one that ran into April Fool's Day out here. So we've got uh, – this is going to be week number one. This is going to be a close this week, or it appears that will be a close this week above last week's close. So that will be bar number one. Odds favor two or three. Now, I know some of you are saying, hey, Stevie, give me a break out here. That's two examples of what happens in bear markets. Well, that's exactly how we really came up with this two- or three-bar rally out here. So great question. But just so that the charts will prove it to you, this is not giving you my opinion. 
This is just my this is just simply my narration of what the charts are communicating to you and I. So here we go back to the 2007 bear market. And what we can see out here, look at all of the two, 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 three, a three, a two, another two out there. Two to three week rallies in bear markets as a counter trend move out there. You might say, that's still not good enough for me, Stevie. I need more. Okay, so I'll give you more. Now, we're not going to waste the entire show on this. I have taken this back all the way to 1896. Take a look at all of the bear markets out there. And guess what we have here? The same kind of thing. Now, if we take a look at the 2000 bear market out here, we had a few four-week rallies or four-bar rallies out here. But most of them were three-bar rallies. Now, when I say three-bar rallies, what I'm referring to here is just simply looking at the close of the prior week versus the close of the current week that we're in or current day. We could do this on monthly. We could now it tends to work better or best on a, a weekly time frame out here. But you can see the bear market rallies that occur. And so we've got the bottoms on the daily. We have the bottoms on the weekly out there. And so what we should see is a two to three week rally out there. It could last two to three months, by the way. But right now we're just simply going with the two to three bar rally out there. In fact, let me do this here. I, I saw some comment inside the Tiger's Den as I was turning the system on. Uh, I know Jimmy or somebody that, that astutely identified and said, hey, looks like we might be in the fourth day uh, to the upside out here for the S&P 500. Now, I'm switching this to the daily time frame. And uh, we actually had uh, day number four took place when I look at the S&P 500 yesterday. That's, again, comparing the close of the current day versus the close of the next day and so forth out there. Now, if we take a look at now what this suggests to you and I and what we're seeing in the market today here, which is just kind of a uh, uh, not much at this stage here. And I'm necessarily expecting the S&P 500 to close higher today. Not that it can't, not that it shouldn't. But typically what we see out here during these daily counter trend moves are about four bars to the upside. So now don't don't pay attention to these black arrows out there. It doesn't change when I go from weekly to daily. It keeps that uh, drawing tool out there but you can look at the charts here you can see this four-day rally back in march uh, march up to march 18th the next day was a little bit of a doji kind of similar to where we're at right now now it's not the end of the day so i don't know um, what type of candle we'll end up with if it is a doji candle and it's got to be a real doji not a fake doji that means the open and the close basically have to be very close to each other if not the same out there if we do close above a high of a doji then that tells you that resistance is uh has uh, uh, failed and price would move higher. But you can see even on a daily basis. And so uh, I properly identified and astutely identified out there, who, whoever that was, my apology. I didn't note it down. I just saw something fly across the screen and it was just really getting ready for M squared who had asked about these uh, two to three week uh, bear market rallies out there because uh, he just wanted to know uh, why I would say such a thing. So now you know too. So what do we want to do next out here? Well, I think we've kind of taken care. What we should do is go take a look at, just to finish this off, is let's go do the play-by-play. -play. What do you mean let's go do the play-by-play? -play? Let's go take a look at the shorter time frame charts because really I've given you the bigger picture out here. But let's go take a look at the shorter time frame charts here for the S&P 500. Let's just stay with the ES Mini. We're going to get that up on our screen here. Now you've got the daily on the left. You've got the five-hour chart, which we've already covered, the TD9 count. So we're not going to pay attention there. The two-hour time frame chart has a TD9 count pattern as well. Price is finding support in that 3881 level. That's the bottom of its profile. The 60-minute time frame chart has a TD9 count top, and now it's got a Rhodes momentum indicator top. We can see that today prices move lower. When it's moved lower, it's found support right at the bottom of that profile, and that's at 3878. So that's really an area to watch to the downside. Um, if you're a day trading out there, if you do see a close, not a move, but a close below 38.78, odds favor a move back to 38.49.50. None of this changes what you and I have already looked at out here, which is to expect a two to three day rally. And even if the market finishes lower today, thanks to whoever put that inside the Tiger's Den to force me to go take a look at the daily time frame with you, that's just normal. That is just normal. 
That would be normal out there. So don't think it's curtains and the markets are getting ready for their next move to the downside. Now, not that they can't, but I'm providing you with the evidence. Look, I'll provide you with the evidence. You be the judge and the jury out there as to what that means. I share with you what I believe that it means out there, and we just simply go from there. If we look at the other short-term time frame charts on a five-minute base, let's say you're a real short-term trader out there. Well, the five-minute time frame chart generated that TD9 count bottom. Prices, it's taken price up to its oscillator and change line. You hear me refer to that uh, that line often during the uh, show and uh, it's just one of the most cool tools that you'll ever encounter it assists you it helps you to identify where price is headed to doesn't tell you whether price will take that out or not but at least you have an idea as to where price is headed to maybe uh, tighten up the stop or what have you now in this case here in order for the five minute chart to get its mojo price has to close above that line that line right now is 38.92 if it does close above that then price is going to make a run to 38.99 or 3903. And if it closes above 3903, 3917 would be next up on the uh, queue. And that's coming from the five minute time frame chart. 10 minute chart out here. I don't have any signals worth uh, sharing with you, nor do I on the 15 minute chart. So it looks like we're all set here in covering the general market. So we get back from this breakout here. We've got a couple of requests, several requests so far. We've got one from uh, Mike, wants to take a look at wheat. Hector wants to take a look at uh, Taiwan Semiconductor. David, Intel or Intuit, maybe. Um, we're going to take a look at all of them. Keep watching the TFNA. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back up, folks. Let's get to a couple of our questions, a couple that came in from the uh, Tigers. Then we get to those first, uh, just to, easier for me to do that and won't lose my place. So the first one was from uh, one of our traders, Ninja, out here. Want to take a look at the seasonal chart for gold during the midterm election uh, seasonal cycle. So Kura, uh, Kura. Um, uh, Ninja, we've got this is the 50 year uh, time frame out here. And uh, what is selected here are all of the dates or all the years where we had midterm cycle elections what this chart shows so the red vertical line out there is today typically what this tells us on a seasonal basis is that right around july 5th or 6th is when a bottom should form inside of gold that would then take us higher into about the early part of september out there so that's what the seasonal uh, cycle tells us here if we take a look at uh, um, typically by day performance fridays are always a good day in gold out here during this midterm seasonal cycle process so just something to take a look at if we take a look at during the seasonal cycle, you've got May and June, which typically are lower, and then you've got June, July, August, September, and so forth. Now, if we we can take a look at what that cycle would be if we don't use the um, if we don't use the uh, the midterm elections. Let me get back back to the 54 year. Even in that case here, you can see that gold typically forms some type of bottom around July the sixth, and then continues to motor on higher. So, Ninja, that's that pattern. But did gold bottom? I mean, the seasonal says you expect and anticipate a bottom around July 5th and July 6th. So the question is, did it form a bottom? To answer that question, all we've got to do is go take a look at the daily time frame chart out here. So that's what we're going to do. And in the upper left-hand corner, you're going to see the daily time frame chart. In fact, forget about the upper left-hand corner. Let's just go ahead and expand out the chart. And what do we have? We have a TD9 count bottom that formed July the 6th. Hmm, something to think about. So you've got that pattern. What we should see take place, and that's, uh, that pattern remains in effect so long as gold does not close below that low. That low, by the way, is 1730.70. It closes below that. It negates that signal, and then we head lower out there. But right now what gold should do should at least go target that red oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 1774. If price can get above that, we're looking at 1813. Above that, 1848, and so forth. So it does appear that gold has formed a bottom, or at least it is following along at this stage of the game with the seasonal cycle that is present in the midterm election cycle process. So I hope that helps you out. That was for our ninja trader. Let's go take a look at the next question. This is coming in from Peter in Park City. Peter wants to take a look at the advanced decline oscillator for the New York Stock Exchange. So let's switch over to that chart. And as long as price is above the zero threshold level, then what that is indicating to you and I is buyers are in control of the market. Now that's very helpful when you see a market that's pulling back. Is it just a retracement? Is it something more than that? This stage here, it's just a normal retracement. After in a bull market, four days of consecutive higher closes out there. So it should take a bit of a rest. But right now, the reading on the advanced client oscillator, which is the difference between the 19 and 39 day exponential moving average of the advanced decline line. Whew, that is a mouthful. But that's what it is. And you can see right now it is above zero. It's printed out at 61.54. There's no real signals. Now, the cool thing about the advanced client oscillator is that, one, it can tell us when we're in extreme oversold or overbought condition. We're not there. Now, we're not there yet. And when we get down into those areas, we see divergent patterns. For example, last one, we saw price moving lower in the New York Stock Exchange. We saw the advanced decline oscillator making higher lows. That's the type of divergence that you would see at bottom. So there's another bottom signal to go along with the daily buy the D-point patterns and the weekly roads momentum indicator signals out there. So, Peter, I hope that that helps you out with regard to the advanced decline oscillator. Let's go to our next question. Our next question coming in from uh, Mike. This is uh, Mountain Mike. Now, I don't know if that means it likes the band Mountain, uh, which is a great band out there. A uh, friend of mine actually used to manage them. Now, I didn't know that. I didn't become friends with this individual until maybe about 15 years ago or so at uh, the stage of the game. But uh, uh, still those guys, some of them get together. Corky, what's Corky's last name? Um, uh, he, he lives up in Canada, but he, he, used, to, he used to actually uh, rent a house um, – out of one of the golf clubs that I uh, that I'm a member at and play at, and uh, uh, but he was down here just a, a couple of months ago. Drummer, uh, what's Corky's last name? In any event, it doesn't really matter. But this is for Mountain Mike. And what does Mountain Mike want to look at already? Get to it, Steve. Okay. What Mountain Mike wants to look at is the ticker symbol W E A T. And the question reads like this: Potentially forming a weekly hammer candle today. 
So we want to take a look at that. Any indications from your system that an upward trend on a weekly chart could resume soon? So first, here's the weekly chart. I'll just simply expand it out. And this does not meet the qualifications for a hammer candle, Mike. In order for this to be a hammer candle, first of all, the wick itself has to be at least twice the size of the body of the candle. These are these little yellow rectangles here. So just a few minutes ago, I went ahead and, you know, and I, I copied what, what the body looked like. And then just simply so that I could visually show you that the uh, wick of the uh, body, the wick of that candle is uh, is less than two times the size of that body. Now, typically you're looking for a small bodied candle, uh, but this does not meet that qualification. So you don't have a uh, you don't have a bullish hammer candle there. Therefore, without a bullish hammer candle, now there's no pattern here, even if there were to be a bullish hammer candle, there's no pattern that I see, no A to B equals CD, no Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom, no TD9 count or anything along those lines. But that doesn't mean that there's not a bottom. And really, the question isn't or shouldn't be what does the weekly chart look like on WEAT, the ETF? But instead, what well, Corky Lang? Thank you very much, Chuck. I eventually, my mind can only handle so much out there. And uh, but in any that that was the drummer for the uh, for a uh, mountain F fun guy party guy for sure. And uh, but uh, so the question with regard to wheat, uh, Mike uh, Mountain Mike, that you should be asking is. What are the underlying instruments? So here, let me show you what the underlying instruments are. Let me make sure I'm on the right chart here. Yep. And here is, and you, you can do this. You go up to the Tecrium uh, ETF uh, entity, a website out there, and you select on uh, what are the holdings. And right now, so this as of as of this morning out here, you've got three contracts that you've got to pay attention to. So forget the patterns on WAT. Go take a look at what the patterns are on the wheat contracts, and specifically the wheat contracts that make up the ETF that you want to trade, which will be WEAT. And that's what we're going to do for you. Um, I'm just trying to get to everything. So here the holdings are. You can see you've got the September, U, the U contract. That represents one-third or 35% of the weighting of this ETF. Another 30% comes from the uh, December 22 contract. That's actually the contract that you would be trading if you were trading the futures contract. And then we've got the December 2023 contract, which represents 35%. So you've really got to be keeping track of that because you might be looking, quite frankly, you might be looking at uh, at only one contract. Maybe you're just looking at September or something and you're trying to figure out, well, what is this doing here? Well, it's because that would only represent about 35% of the ETF. So now we're good. We know where uh, what uh, what we need to look at. And to do that, with regard to those three contracts, what we do is we set up a, a template. That template here, as soon as I can get to it, is going to uh, accomplish that force. In the upper left-hand corner, you have the September contract for wheat. Just simply going to expand this out. Why? Well, first, if we take a look at patterns out here, although not drawn in, here's your A point, which was the TD9 count top on May 17th. Your B point was the TD9 count bottom on June the 1st out there. And your C point was the uh, uh, was the rally up into June the 6th. That created an A to B equals C to the downside. The importance of that is that you generated a three river morning star pattern. That meant that you generated a buy the D point pattern yesterday. What have we seen today and overnight? What we've seen is additional rally. Price is now above its oscillator and change line, Mike. So we, the September contract, is going to rally. But it may peter out when it gets up to the 921.85 level. But there's the September contract. Here's the December. It also formed a buy the D point pattern. Guess what? So did December of 2023 out there. That's what you really needed to know about wheat, what was going on in the underlying instruments. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC. 
LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go to our next question here. We've got uh, at least three more in the uh, queue. Uh, this one coming from uh, Hector. Hector and uh, Patty. Hector goes on to say, hey, happy, fabulous Fosters. Frosty Friday. Now you're making me thirsty. Um, I may have to catch an uh, archive today. Well, that's no problem. Uh, so uh, he's, he's ta talking about Taiwan Semiconductor. TSM is the uh, ticker symbol. Goes on to say, TSM, the weekly A to B equals CD down by the D point is currently in process, correct? And I'm going to say the answer to that is yes. Uh, bullish reversal sign with volume, correct? No. We do not have a, on a weekly time frame, we do not have a bullish reversal candle, at least not yet. Um, so that's important. And then you were asking about volume on a four-day week, even stronger, correct? Uh, yes, but you've actually made lower lows, not higher highs out there. So, you know, I would... I would ask you the question here, since you're making a lower low and you're doing with volume and you haven't made a higher high, are we pushing lower or are we pushing higher? So just something to think about there. Uh, the start, uh, you said the chart that, uh, so, uh, okay, I don't need to read the rest of the information. So Hector and Patty, first I'm going to open up the uh, weekly time frame chart. And we're just going to look at the weekly time frame chart. What I've drawn here is a couple of different A to B equals CD patterns. So let's take a look at the first one that Stevie draws in. The A point is very easy to identify. In fact, this is going to, I'm going to use Taiwan Semiconductor for another uh, a listener that uh, wrote in uh, and was struggling with trying to figure out the A to B equals CD patterns on the uh, spies out there. So I'm going to just use uh, Taiwan Semiconductor to do that. Now, remember, when we're drawing A to B equals CD patterns, we're typically using information that is revealed to us, you know, each day. And as we get more information that is revealed to us, that might force us to come back and draw a new pattern. So if we were just like this at this stage here, um, this early stage here, we were drawn in A to B equals CD patterns. I'm going to do that right now. The B pattern, well, we know the A pattern. It was the high from the week that began January 10th. The B pattern at this stage here that I've got is January 24th. Come on, what the heck's going on here? 
There you go. And then the C point was a couple week rally into resistance. So, you know, I, I happen to have a, a nice tool, the TAS market profiles, and I certainly like to be able to use those to help me easily identify, you know, resistance or maybe where we might take a look at a, a, a C or a B point out there. But here was the first A to B equals CD pattern. And what took place, and this is on a weekly chart that we're taking a look at, here was your bullish reversal candle that completed the one to one level. And that price moves up into a slightly bearish structured profile out there. So that's the first pattern. But there is another A to B equals C that we can draw in, and there's no reason to not have multiple patterns. I know it might be confusing, but it is the way that it is. I can't change the, the rule. I can I could change the rules. I'm not going to change the rules. We're just going to use the rules that are out there. So the A point is going to remain the same. But the B point, Hector and Patty, and, and I think it was Laura that wrote in. I apologize if I... I meant to write it down and they didn't. But the B point out here would be the low of March 14th. And uh, the uh, uh, C point would be the high of the week of March 28th. Now, that was only 25% A to B equals CD. The other one is a 46% retracement out there. I'm referring to the B to C leg. I typically like to get to at least a point three eight two, But that could be the other A to B equals CD on a weekly basis. Now, the way that a A to B equals CD pattern, this is the way that I do it. This is the way I suggest that you do it as well is that you wait for a confirmation. That confirmation is some type of bullish reversal candle. And so here on that second A to B equals CD, which we so we're below the bottom of a bullish structured profile. And this suggests that Taiwan semiconductor on the larger term maybe wants to go target the 6238 level. But there's no bullish reversal candle to then suggest, like we saw back here, the week of uh, March, uh, March the 14th, we don't have a confirmation of a weekly by the D point. Now, that could be completely different than what we have on the daily time frame. In fact, it is a completely different. And here's the example where I was going to go to with Laura. Here I've drawn in on a daily base that first A to B equals CD. But here we can see the stair step approach to the, to the way down. So how do you figure out which A to B equals CD is really the active one, the ones that are in play? The answer to that is when I get confused, or I, I, and, and I'm no different than you, say, well, which one do we use out here? What I like to do is cut out some of the noise. If you cut out some of the noise, typically it will reveal itself to you. Some of the noise means if you're on a daily time frame chart, then go to the weekly. Go to the weekly and see if you can clearly identify the A to B equals CD pattern. And typically you'll be able to do that and use that as more of your guideline as to what is going on inside the market when you take a look at daily and or weekly. And the same thing on a weekly, if you're confused, go take a look at the monthly. If you're trading a 30 minute, go to a 60 minute. You might have to even go to 120. But if you go to the larger time frames, you'll reduce the noise. Those swing points will typically stand out and they're going to apply to the shorter time frame charts too. Whew. So I hope, you helped. Well, I hope that helps you out. Now, what we didn't do is we just focused there on the weekly time frame. So I don't know that we really helped out, uh, Patty and uh, Hector out here. What I will share with you is uh, let's go take a look at the uh, daily time frame. So on the daily time frame, we do have a confirmed by the D point pattern. You're going to keep that weekly uh, in uh, play out there, at least in your mind. So here is the, you've also got a Rosemont indicator bottom. So it doesn't matter what's A to B equals CD. You've got the Rosemont indicator pattern that was formed with yesterday's gap to the upside. You're above profile levels. You are above the oscillator and change line. So Taiwan, Taiwan semiconductor should continue to rally. Its next price target should be the high from or or it should be the candle from June 27th. That's anywhere between 85.58 and 87 bucks, even Stephen out there. So Hector and Patty, I hope that helps you out. Let's go on to our next question out here. The next question coming from David H. David wants to take a look at INTU. So let's get that fired up on the screen here. I believe that is Intuit, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, great, INT, whoops, TU. Oh man, what did I do there? Sorry, on the wrong screen. And did not want to do that. So INTU is, in fact, Intuit. And the question is, Steve, uh, give your perspective on Intuit. You've got the 420 calls expiring on the 15th out here. So as we take a look at Intuit, here's what we know. Price is dealing right now today, uh, David H., with resistance, which uh, is the top of its weekly profile. And that is specifically at the price point of 406.70 out there. If I take a look at the daily time frame, because I think that's really more important to you than anything else, you've got a Rosemont indicator pattern for back on May 12th. Price runs higher, makes an A to B equals CD to the upside, uh, gets confirmed with a sell the D point pattern on June the 3rd, uh, makes a retracement, comes back and looks like it was just simply testing 
that uh, swing point from May the 12th. So on May the 12th, that swing point, by the way, had volume of 3.2 million shares. That was tested with 2 million shares. So there was your test and rejection. Now what price is uh, doing today, not much, not really. Well, I take that back. It is testing it is testing this swing point out here from June the 2nd. So the June 2nd swing point had volume there of 1.4 million shares. You're only up with 5 million shares. This appears to me to be still bullish. Should at least go try, if it closes, you'd love to see it close inside that swing point. That would require a close about 408.48. You don't have to have that, uh, but you're pushing into that swing point with lighter volume. But, I, you know, other than the resistance on the weekly time frame out here, price should continue to move higher out there with the general markets. With regard to the weekly time frame, A to B equals CD to the downside. That was confirmed a couple of uh, weeks ago out there. Uh, so that's following along with what we looked at with the general indices. So, David, uh, best of luck to you on this uh, trade out here. Other than the weekly resistance level, you know, it does look like this should continue to push higher, which I believe was your question. We get back from this breakout here. We're going to go take a look at Roblox. RBLX is the ticker symbol. And this one's for Greg M. Greg's question is, uh, would you look at this for me? Yeah, I have it coming close to finishing an A to B equals CD up at about the 45, 43 level. You're looking at selling the D point. Well, we're going to take a look at that when we get back to this break. Steve Rose, good. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. So we got Roblox daily uh, chart up on our screen out here. Uh, this is for Greg M. And uh, Greg is trying to sell the D point. Again, we take a look at the A to B equals C D pattern. So, Greg, I don't know which one you're 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 looking at. There's two potential A to B equals C D patterns out here. The first one, if you were to use a low on May 10th, that would be your A point. And the B point up here would be the high from May 16th. Now, this pulls back and this does an 85% retracement. Once you get past 0.786 out there, then it really isn't an A to B equals C D. It's more of a consolidation. So that's the first thing I would say. Now, you could use that low from June the 16th as your A point. Your B point out here would be um, the trading day of June the 28th, and the retracement is June the 30th. But that retracement is less than 0.382 retracement. So I don't really like that one either out here. But here's what we do know. Regardless of that, if you did use the A to B equals CD pattern, you don't have a bearish reversal candle. So this says it wants to continue higher. Now, price has stalled a little bit, but it stalled where it should, which is the TD9 count breakdown level. And that's at 44.82. It has not hit that level exactly, but that's really where its targets got very close to it. In fact, the high of this session so far today is uh, 44.50. But it's just running into resistance. I don't see a sell signal here. You've got a battle at 44.82. You've got another battle at 50.07. When we look at the larger time frame chart, now there's a lot of, not a lot of data on the monthly time frame out here, but look at this. Last month was a confirmed rose momentum indicator bottom pattern out there. And price on a weekly basis looks like it's going to close above the top of its bearish structured profile. In order to do that, it has to close today above 37.33. That is a change in trend signal. So, now I think you had mentioned inside your your email to me that you saw um, it seems to be showing strength. You say strength today. I'd say it's uh, showing strength this week for sure because it's taking out a bearish structured profile. There were sellers between 34.19 and 37.33. Looks like they got run over by a Roblox truck. Folks, have a fantastic weekend. Thanks so much for joining us here today. Stay tuned. You've got two more great hours. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. After that, Tom O'Brien, he'll take us on home. I'll be back with you tomorrow, uh, or tomorrow on Monday. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll see you soon.